All right. So institutions around us have been created and engineered before the internet. And they're increasingly disconnected from our reality. The political parties, the media, the unions, the European Union, all of those are increasingly disconnected. And in a way, the people in those institutions feel a bit like the new court of Versailles, right? All of those people are basically in their own bubble. They even sleep with one another, quite literally. Um, and they basically are totally disconnected from reality. And then, you know, they believe that they know better what's good for us. They believe they know better how education should work, how um, all the systems should work, basically. Um, but they've never been you know, outside of their bubble. They've never been teachers, they've never been entrepreneurs, they've never really worked outside of that. And, you know, and they think that they know because they are so-called experts. But the thing is, you can read all the books about how it is to be a parent, unless, until you are a parent, you, know, you, you have no idea. It's an entirely different experience. You need to experience it yourself. And so those people don't know. I actually ask them, like, how do you know that people are actually paying attention, that they still listen to you on TV and radio? And they told me, like, well, it's simple. Uh, every three months or so, we call people on their landline. On their, on their what? Has, has, has anyone told them that we don't have those anymore? Like, only your parents do. Right? So no joke that they still believe that they are popular. Uh, and, I mean, this is, this is crazy. So basically, they have no feedback loop anymore. And without feedback loop, they, they, ho they don't have any reality check. And that's why they're increasingly disconnected. And in the meantime, 91% of us don't believe anymore, don't trust anymore those old institutions. Do you? I don't. And you know, we're good citizens, so we try to provide them with some feedback every now and then. And every year, actually, we go on the streets and we do demonstrations. And we do that every single year. And like for decades. Like, guys, it doesn't work. Right? We need to change gears. We need to try a different tactic. Right? We need to stop fighting. It doesn't work. We need to learn to accept reality as it is and not as we would like it to be. Right? This is important, and I know it's not easy, because the first reaction we have is to be angry against the system, against the establishment, and we try to fight, but it doesn't help, it doesn't work. For many years, we tried to go against the hegemony of Microsoft Windows, if you remember. Many companies, even the European Union, did everything they could to go against them. But the only people who achieved to displace them were Google. Why? Because they accepted the reality. They didn't try to fight Microsoft on their ground. They focused on what they were good at, and they moved the conversation away from individual computers with their operating systems towards the network. And I think there is a lesson to learn there. We need to ignore them. They don't deserve our attention. Best way to do that is probably to turn off your TV. Those are the windows of the new court of Versailles. They don't deserve our attention. Instead, we should focus our energy on what we can change, what we have control over. That's what we tried to do last year in Belgium. Um, we basically tried to come up with a startup manifesto. We gathered a community of entrepreneurs, and the goal was to surface recommendations to the government, but not only. Why? Well, first, in Belgium, we don't always have a government. Um, I mean, for those of you who don't know Belgium, it's not really a country, it's a concept. Uh, but that's a different topic. Uh, but most importantly, the reason why we did that is because 
Everybody has a role to play to make the environment a better environment where startups can blossom. It's important to reach people and, and, and tell them, like, look, what do you have control over? And so some recommendations that came out of it were, for example, we wanted to ask journalists to give more coverage to startups instead of just covering the old, well-established companies. We asked teachers to, instead of teaching our kids how to find a job, teach them how to find customers, give them tools to be free. We asked our families, our parents, to encourage their kids to try to pursue their passion, try different things before getting straight out of college, directly to an old company where their drive and innovative mind is going to slowly die. So everyone has a role to play. In essence, it was kind of a lobbying group 2.0 a grassroots movement where everybody was welcome to contribute. You just had to have a story to share about what it's like to create your company in Belgium. And you had to share it with the waffle tag. And then it will pick it up. Um, at some point, we wanted to print this logo on stickers to promote the movement even further. But we were all volunteers. And so we didn't have money. So we thought, like, well, no big deal, let's just create a website and let's put Stripe and start collecting credit cards and, uh, and collect money. There are literally thousands of people willing to help and ship in. Turns out it's not that simple, because today to, create, to start collecting money for a group of people with a shared purpose for a community, you first need to create a bank account. And to create a bank account, you first need to create a legal entity. And legal entities have been engineered a long time ago, in 1901. And this is crazy. I mean, way, way before the internet. And, and so it didn't feel right. I mean, not only it takes weeks, which we didn't have, but also, you know, they require you to have, like, uh, fixed leaders, you know, at least three people who will be there at least a year. And then when you collect the money, it goes into a black box, a bank account that only the treasurer has access to, it just didn't feel right. So we ended up not doing it, and it was a very frustrating experience, because there were literally thousands of people supporting the movement who wanted to help, give money, to, to promote something that they believe in, and we had to leave that money on the table. It made me realize that the internet so far has been pretty good at helping people get together and do amazing things together from meetups to open source projects to movements like Occupy Wall Street. But once there is money involved, we are still stuck in the past. And because of that, we cannot finance those movements, and those movements are ephemeral. They disappear as quickly as they appeared. Podemos understood that. And Podemos was able to turn their movement into an institution, a political party. And they did that by getting 285,000 people to become members and pay five euros a month. That changes the game. The result? In two years' time, they went from nothing to the second largest political party in Spain. It really shows that we need to find a way to enable those initiatives coming from the internet, from our communities, to be able to collect money to sustain themselves. We need to upgrade this. This doesn't cut it anymore. It doesn't help. Nobody is creating an association of 1901 for an open source project, or for a meetup, or for a movement. We need a new version for 2016 and beyond. A new association that will be transparent by design, where all the money, all the people who put money in the association should be able to follow the money. Open. Everyone who has something to contribute should be able to come and contribute. And fluid. We shouldn't have fixed leaders. Leaders should be able to evolve over time, depending on who is contributing the most. And so we call those new type of association for the internet generation open collectives. And here is the good news. We can actually start building those collectives today. We can 
we don't have to wait for lobbying or governments to change the law. We don't need to ask for permission in the same way that Google didn't have to ask for permission from Microsoft to start building a search engine. And we don't even have to wait for people to understand what Bitcoin is or Ethereum. We can simply use existing organizations, Association of 1901, and use them as umbrella organizations. They will host open collectives in the same way that on a web server, on a physical web server, you can host many different websites. And if you have one of those associations, you can become a host, and you can be the hero in your community that will enable other people to create those new kind of collectives, that will enable them to start collecting money and dispersing money in full transparency to be able to sustain their activities. Together, we can build the world that we want, one community at a time. So entrepreneurs, unite. Farmers, unite. Teachers, unite. Uber drivers, unite. Paris, unite. Wherever you are, whatever you do, unite. Because the truth is, you know better what it takes to make your community thrive. You know better what it takes to make the people in your community happier. So go create collectives for your community and fund them. Give your communities the means to be successful, to be sustainable, and to have an impact to make the world a better place for all of us. Join the movement. We open sourced everything. And we can't wait to see um, all the collectives that's going to be created. Thank you very much.